Welcome back to Piney Grove, folks. Brad here. Deb is back in Panama City at the house taking care of some things today. So I'm flying solo. I'm inside the shed right now because it's a little windy. We had our first cold front come through and it's 58 degrees out there. It's a really, really nice temperature, but with that wind and I don't have an external mic, um, it would just be a lot of annoying wind noise if I didn't uh, open this up inside the shed. And I'm gonna take a walk back to the plot and see how the spraying went. It's been about seven days and I need a good burn of that grass back there before I plant uh, the food plot for this, for this winter. So if I got a good burn, I'll go ahead and, uh, and plant that today. I, I'll hook up to the tiller. I've got the seed, I'll spread the seed by hand and we'll go through that process. All right, I see greenery, but I didn't spray this into the plot. All right, I'm starting to see any yellow and brown. All right, no deer out here. It looks like, uh, looks like things are, are burn off a little bit. The Bahia obviously don't care about gly too much. So you can definitely see yellowing from where I sprayed last week. I could till this and plant today. I'll check the moisture by kicking, kicking around the soil. We'll do that right here, but it doesn't look like there's been any rain, so. There's a little bit of moisture there. It would be dusty, but it could be done. These sedges are burning off. You can see they're yellowing. So yeah, I would, I would get some thatch in the, uh, in the tiller for sure. I'll have to clean out if I plant today. And I probably will now that I look at it. But just to show you how in, inexact a science spraying is. You know, I try to keep track of where I'm spraying. You can see a little green spot there that I missed. And look, you can see at about 10 feet little spot there that I missed. And you can see a strip over here that I missed. And it's just really hard without, you know, farm sprayers will use foam to show where they stopped and where they started spraying. And I just I just missed this six foot section right here. One pass I missed, but that's the difference. Left side, not sprayed, right side sprayed. And that's just a week. There's another little spot I missed too. All right, guess I'll go hook the tiller up. Got the tiller on the tractor and it's all level. It was still level from the bush hog. It's never fun to hook up three-point hitch equipment, especially with a PTO shaft, but it went on pretty easy. All right, so she's ready to go. I got a one-acre food plot. So I've got 50 pounds of Wren's Abruzzi rye grain, not rye grass, but rye grain. I got 50 pounds of oats and 50 pounds of wheat. T typical seeding rate for one acre would be about 75 to 80 pounds of grain seed. Um, I'll probably go a little bit heavy, so I won't put that whole 150 out there, but I'll put more than I'll put more than 50. We'll just see. Here's my solo hand spreader. I'll do the, the rye seed or the grain seed with, and there's my Scott spreader that I'll do my chicory and my clover with. I measured out the chicory and the clover this morning. I brought extra. I've got a couple of jugs of uh, chicory and a jug of clover. Clover is about five pounds to the acre. Chicory is about the same, but um, I'll just put it out till I think I have enough out there. Make sure I don't step in an anthill. That's a surprise you don't want. All right, so finally gonna get to do what I came here to do, which is plant this food pot behind me. It's a one acre food pot. I got all my grains ready. So what I'm gonna do, and I've never seen anybody do a food pot like this before or talk about how they do it. But I'm going to spread the seed right on top of this ground. This ground hasn't been tilled since last year, since last October, November. Just going to spread it right on top of the ground. Then I'm going to go over top of that with the tiller. And those grain seeds are going to get incorporated in with that thatch and that, uh, that dirt that I till. And that's going to be good. Those grains could be good. I could call it a day. Then I'll go over top of it with my little spreader and the small seeds, the chicory and the clover. Then I'm either gonna go get my chain drag if I have time, or I'm just gonna use the tractor bucket and smooth it down and push those little seeds down. The rye grain and the other grain seeds, they can go in an inch, inch and a half, and they're fine. They'll pop up. Um, they'll find a way to germinate and pop up through that crust. But small seeds like clover and chicory, 
they can be down they can be down no more than a quarter of an inch so i can't throw them on top and incorporate them in with the tiller or they'll go too deep so that's what i'm going to do my backpack spreader it's like three times you fill it up we'll put out 50 pounds so i'm probably going to walk this pot five or six times as i put out each set of grains the rye and the wheat will flow through the spreader very easily the oats tend to get bound up so you're going to see me bouncing the spreader so i'll capture a little bit of that but you know how much how many times you want to watch me walk back and forth across this pot so let me get to it load up the spreader and get spreading i've got the spreader loaded with rye seed now i do have an atv spreader but i didn't feel like towing the atv out here today that would make quick work of this but it's only a one acre pot it's not that much to walk and i kind of want to get this right atv spreader is a little bit more inexact all the rice seeds out and all of the wheat seed is out but you heard me talk about oats and how they're hard to spread you can see they're long and they have the husk on them they get caught up in the bottom of the cedar and the flow gate and you open it up all the way and they still get hung up in there because they're they're just long and cumbersome so you'll see me shaking the spreader as i go but once i get these out it'll be time to jump on the tractor and do some tilling well the oats through the flow gate of the cedar was way worse than i remembered so i actually just started reaching inside of the cedar and throwing them out by handfuls there they are i'm just going to put them in a five gallon bucket and then seed them by hand i'm just going to go along and just throw them out there i've got great coverage with the rye i got great coverage with the wheat but I'm just not going to get it with the oats. I was spinning and spinning and spinning the spreader and nothing was coming out. Okay, it's 1.30 and all the grains are spread. Like I always say, this always takes me longer than I thought. I went ahead and just spread them all by hand. So there's going to be little pockets of oats out there, but that, that'll be perfectly fine. I got the rye and the wheat spread pretty good. So I'm going to jump on this 3901, get this King Cutter 5-foot tiller running, and uh, get this seed incorporated in the soil. Now seriously folks, isn't that a beautiful sight? Look behind me. Tilled land. You can see the clay behind me and that's from when they cleared the land they dug holes for all the stumps and the things that wouldn't burn and so that's where those holes are. But slowly but surely every time I till this pot I incorporate more of that clay in with the other soil mixtures. So you see that I'm going crossways and that's because water flows down this uh, incline or this grade from right to left. So I want as many ripples as possible to catch that water to reduce erosion. And I'm going slow to really grind up that thatch. I, I haven't had any wrapping with the tiller. I haven't had to cut the wrappings around the tiller ends or the bearings once yet. So um, I think I'm going to be okay. Maybe a little bit on the other end it gets thick, but I might be okay and not have to cut any. So that's good, but but I'm going real slow because I want to grind it up. And also this is a, it's a clay soil, so it's not a loose or a sandy soil. And uh, you can't go quick in a clay soil or else um, it'll just skip across the top. I want it to grind up everything real good. I only do this once a year.
Okay, folks, if you've seen our other videos, we cleared this land in 2018. This food pot was just as thick as that woods behind me and the woods in front of the tractor. But you can see now, after four years of tilling, and I only till it once a year, you know, October, November, I come in here and I put in my fall pot, and then that carries through all the way to the summer. This pot here will not get touched again until March or April. I might mow it, might mow it again once or twice in the summer, and then start the process all over again. So this all started with mowing this plot to see if I could till it, but the grass and the weeds were too thick. So I had to, um, I had to burn it off by spraying it a week ago and now I'm spreading seed and tilling it. So that's the process year after year. I can't think of a place I'd rather be on a somewhat cool Sunday in Florida, but out here in the fields, putting in these food pots. So I'm gonna turn off this camera because there's only so much you can watch me go back and forth and do this tilling, but we'll check in a little bit later on and see how the progress is going. All right, folks, here's where we're at, but it's all tilled. It, uh, it went slow, but I wanted to get all the edges done. I was backing up into the woods and just making sure that I'm complete from woods to woods all the way across this plot. But the next step, I'm gonna put out the clover seed and the, and the chicory seed. I'm gonna walk that in. And then I forgot, but there's another method that I use for small seed besides just either backblading with the, with the bucket on the tractor or pulling a drag, is that I can put the rototiller down without turning it or engaging the PTO and just that motion is enough to push those little seeds in and disturb the topsoil, in addition to the tire marks that'll push the uh, chicory and the clover seed in. I was gonna mix the chicory and the clover seed, but I remembered that clover seed is smaller and it goes down to the bottom of the spreader. So I'm gonna do chicory and then clover. So I'm gonna walk across the plot two more times. had the flow gate at the bottom of the cedar. I didn't open it enough when I first walked across the plot. So I had a lot extra. So I went back over the plot again, just to get some even seeding on the chicory. Next is the clover. Not gonna record that. I will record the tractor though. Okay, the seeds all spread. I got uh, chicory out and clover out. And now, like I said, I'm gonna put that rototiller down without engaging the PTO and just kind of walk in this seed. So I started this uh, task today, or started this plot at around one o'clock, I think, 12.45, and it's four o'clock now. So let's just say, um, let's say I'll have about four hours invested in it when it's totally done. But I was very methodical with it. I made sure that uh, I tilled edge to edge. I mean, I put the tiller up in the woods a little bit, and then I made sure I had good coverage by walking the pot with each seed separately instead of mixing it together. So. I guess if you're trying to speed plot this, you could do it in maybe a couple hours, but I want it I want it uniform. I want it smooth so that when I mow it, I'm not bouncing all over the place with the tractor later in the spring and next summer and early fall. Anyway, that's the process. Uh, if you followed along with the videos, you've seen the process is basically a three-step process for planting food pots, or at least the one that I've adopted. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. I've, uh, I've still got to run across this plot a little bit more and finish it up but the sun's setting and uh i just i gotta get it i gotta get done and stop moving this camera around so hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did please click like please click subscribe we're trying to grow this channel we're trying to um share our experiences out here in northwest florida with taking raw land and turning it into a homestead into a farm so uh please share with your friends if you like this content and you find it enjoyable otherwise uh, we will catch you on the next one take care